We seek to investigate how Colby students form friendships by analyzing different sociological factors. Such factors include class and status backgrounds, institutional and organizational factors. We interviewed approximately 15 students of varying backgrounds, including athletes and non-athletes, to gain better insight into the process of forming friendships at Colby. We predict that Colby students form friendships centered around the idea of homophily. In order to do so, we first asked our interviewees how they came to meet their friends at Colby and what they had in common with their friends. I met most of my friends through just classes. Uh, I met a lot of my friends through lacrosse and then some, uh, had some, had some mutual friends through classes as well and people in my dorm room. I came to meet my friends, you know, being on a team full of 90 plus kids, it's just really easy to meet people because they know so many people, so kind of just not working that way. I similarly came to meet sort of my core friends on my team, but um, got introduced to a lot of new people through classes and different clubs and activities. So like we're all Questbridge and basically we decided <laughs> to text our group chat before coming here that we'll meet the first day. And I think we all played like card games or something. Through, I mean, at freshman year through dorms, we were just roommates and yeah. floor mates. Yeah, and dorms, um, international student, I'm an international student. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. International, international student, student orientation. When asking people how they met their friends at Kobe, we noticed there are many different ways social ties are created at Kobe. Amongst our interviewees, the most common are through social groups, including both primary and secondary. Some of these primary groups are sports team, quest, bridge, and international students. These primary groups are all relatively small, allowing members to create close and intimate ties and relationships providing a sense of belonging and kinship. Some examples of secondary groups include classes and living spaces, such as dorms. These relationships are less personal, but create opportunities for friendships to catalyze as these members share a specific interest and identity, as well as form a large network of weaker ties. Um, we share a lot of things in common. Uh, we do a lot of the same things together, um, you know, working out, watching soccer games, uh, playing video games together, stuff like that. I guess we discuss a lot of things about like tech, gaming, um, things we're like interested in. Or just politics and politics things that anything. happen. Yeah. Yeah. And actually one time we took uh, like a political view, like our political spectrum, like uh, test and we were kind of in the same area. I think for me one thing that I share in common with my closest friends are sort of like morals and values. Um, I'm a big personality guy. I only go towards people that have good personalities and I think that's the one big thing that me and my friends share in common. We kind of have the same personality whether it be I love food, video games, more food. And things I share with them are just other things like some of them we might be from this like same state and we have that in common or we have similar hobbies like hiking and being outdoors so i honestly don't think there's like one big thing that kind of like connects us all together i think maybe like shared interests sometimes plays a factor um but also like if i just like a person and like i vibe with them I, i'm like their friend we observed that many students have friends who share similar values, morals, beliefs, practices, interests, and hobbies. This is extremely representative of the idea of homophily, that individuals are drawn towards people similar to them. This supports our predictions that most students meet their friends through social groups that enable them to form bonds over their shared interests, as these social groups are often derived from common interests. This can be representative of how people seek to feel a sense of belonging and acceptance within new environments. I guess meet my friends split into two categories, people of my white friends and my uh, people of color friends. So my people of color friends, we come from similar backgrounds. A lot of us have parents that are immigrants, um, didn't really have a lot growing up, uh, still made the most of what we had to come here. My white friends, obviously, 
had an easier upbringing, came from predominantly white neighborhoods that were wealthy of some sort? I, I don't think so. I mean, most of my friends are international people and because of that we shared different backgrounds in, in the way that we're from different countries and I mean I'm the only one from my country here so I guess that makes that makes that my background is different than everyone else's but we do share the fact that our background is different than most people here. That I am probably upper middle class I would say that most people that I know here tend to be that or higher upper class. Um, Our findings suggest that individuals differ in terms of whether or not background plays a role in who they are friends with. Through analysis of social ties and network structure, some individuals appear to be compartmentalizers, having distinct clusters of friends, while others appear to have tight-knit groups where members are closely connected and share a common background. Overall, we mostly observe that the idea of homophily is influential in forming friendships here at Colby. However, we did find some instances where this was not the case.